Hi and welcome to Honors Physics. My name is Mr. Nangle. Here's a course overview. We're going to be talking about mechanics, which is motion, kinematics, dynamics, Newton's laws of universal gravitation, circular motion, work power and energy, impulse and momentum, rotation, which is an honors exclusive, electrostatics, electricity, magnetism, waves, sound, electromagnetic waves, modern physics. So basically just like everything, which is pretty cool. Um, student access, uh, we meet via Zoom. Students will join the Zoom waiting room a minute before class begins. That way I could just click the button right when the bell rings and everybody comes in. Uh, and when they come in, they have their camera on so I can make sure that everybody's there. Uh, I'll do the face check as I do as they do the do now. Um, and I explain the objectives for that day. So that's the synchronous part of the lesson. Uh, where we're doing things together. So they either do the do now and then I review the do now with them and then send them on their way to do the lecture. Um, so that's cool. Schoology, that's where the asynchronous thing kicks in. So I have videos of me doing my lectures um, posted on Schoology so they can watch those videos on their own, um, pause and rewatch as they see necessary. I do have a remind set up for all the classes. Um, this is just a way for me uh, as a backup way of communicating in case Zoom or Schoology crash. Um, also, sometimes students send me remind messages asking about help for a particular problem, and then I get a push notification to my phone that I could help them like in real time, which is pretty cool too. So this is what a typical lesson would look like. It involves uh, the do now slide that I'll have. That's typically up in Zoom, um, but for whatever reason, if they couldn't log into Zoom, it's there for them. Um, then I have a video of me doing the lecture. This is my YouTube channel, PhysX, named after um, a student of mine my first year was like, hey, Mr. Nangle, PhysX, like extreme. And I was like, hmm, I'm going to steal that. So after they watch the video lecture, they do the assignment. Now, typically I'll have a video of me doing the assignment as well, but it's not necessary. So you don't have to watch the video of me doing the assignment. That's there as like an extra resource. Um, the assignment is posted at the bottom of the page with the answer key. So my idea is to have them do the assignment, check their work, and if they can't figure out why they got something wrong, if they're really struggling with it, then they go to the video of me doing the assignment. Um, and it seems to be working well, the kids liked it. So this is just the course outline. It's already all up in Schoology. I've been working towards this uh, for a few years now. Um, and you know all the lectures are there so that's how i name my lessons is like unit two lesson three would be 2.3 and i have them all in an excel spreadsheet um, at the top you can see there's other dates and uh, period six and seven the red and the blue are my physics classes and i can tell you what we're going to be covering in like May. If you tell me, oh, Mr. Nangle, I'm going to be absent like in May, I'm like, oh, okay, just do uh, assignment 14.3 and uh, should be good to go. So course expectations, I already talked about synchronous versus asynchronous. The homework policy, class time will be designated for all assignments. My goal is to have them not have to do any work outside of class. Um, additional time will, be tip will typically be given on Wednesdays whenever possible to get caught up. Um, there is no penalty for late work. All work must be submitted by the last day of the quarter and assignments are going to be due Wednesday night. So work is going to be graded on Thursdays and Fridays, including the late work. So if you hand in, let's say the assignment is due on Wednesday, you don't get it in, it's late. Yeah, I'm not going to take off points, but I graded everything on Thursday and Friday. And now everything's good. I'm done grading for the week. You hand it in on Saturday. It's already counted as missing because I graded it already as missing and it's in a 40% in infinite campus. But don't worry, it's not going to be missing forever. It'll just be missing for a couple of days because the next week comes, the next batch of assignments are due on that Wednesday. And then I grade those assignments on Thursday and Friday. And that's when I grade all the late work as well. So. Um, it'll be missing for a few days, but I'll always get to it and update the grade book at the end of uh, each week. Um, speaking of grading, assessments are worth 
assignments are 30%, labs are 20%. Students could do test corrections, not on quizzes, not on quarterlies, not on midterms or finals, but you could get half credit if you do test corrections. Um, these are the required materials. Most kids already got their textbook. Um, a scientific calculator, as long as it has sine, cosine, and tangent, that works. Protractor, ruler, notebook, folder, and pencil. Please contact me via email if you have any questions or comments or concerns. Um, I thrive on feedback, and I'm always trying to make things better. So I think I'm doing a good job, uh, but like sometimes students will be like, oh, you made a mistake on this, you made a mistake on that, or they'd be like, well, why don't you do it this way? And uh, I take those suggestions uh, to heart and I try to make my practice better. So if you have any questions, concerns, or comments at any time, I'm please, I welcome them, especially in this um, like weird remote learning environment. We need to all kind of work as a team. So I'm, I'm happy to have those kinds of conversations with you. Um, student support. So there's a pink resource folder. One of the things in there is an extra help page um, I want to help. I want to do extra help. Uh, I've never done it remotely before, but what I have in there is instructions on um, if, if they email me and they tell me, hey, can we meet so and so time, we'll set up a time and we'll do like a Zoom conference. So it's like a virtual tutor almost. Um, and it, I said like period four is when I'm free and the afternoon and Wednesday would be good times. To do that so far nobody's reached out but i'm more than happy to do those uh, extra help zoom sessions by appointment um, and then there's also these two links um, are great resources um, if they feel like just reading through and getting some extra plus the textbook's good too uh, so that's nice so thanks for watching and uh, it's been about seven minutes but i did want to give you a little taste of some astrophysics it's not in the curriculum but i'll sprinkle it in every once in a while if i can uh, so I don't know if you've heard of the Hubble Deep Field before, but maybe you've heard of the Hubble Telescope. It's this big telescope that's orbiting Earth right now. And uh, scientists wanted to focus on the smallest, darkest patch of sky they could and see what they could see. As a reference, the patch of sky they were looking at is the size of a dime held 25 yards away from you. So imagine a dime up in the sky held 25 yards away from you. And they picked a spot that was super dark. They didn't. They were trying not to point it at anything, and they would. They wanted to see what would happen if they opened the aperture for over a hundred hours of exposure time to this tiny little black dot in the sky. Said, What's out there? This is what was out there. That's over. That's over 5,000 galaxies in that tiny little darkest part of the sky they could find. So we're, you're possibly looking at trillions of planets. And I'll leave you with a quote by Arthur C. Clarke that was on a poster in my physics teacher's uh, classroom. Two possibilities exist. Either we're alone in the universe or we're not. Both are equally terrifying. Have a great day.